Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Last weekend I had the opportunity to tie at the International Fly, Fly Tire Symposium sorry, in Persephone, New Jersey. Um, cool show, I love it. If you ever get the chance to go, you have to go. It's all the tires get together. It's a tying show. It's not really an industry show. It's a tying show. And uh, you, we get tires from all over the world come together hang out and uh, just tie for you guys so you guys get to see a lot of different patterns a lot of different techniques and um, a lot of different variations in styles of tying you know salt water some guys are salt water you got some European guys come over and uh, it's a great time we have a we have a great time I love going cool thing this year was they gave an award to um, Barry Ord Clark for the fly tire of the year the international fly tire of the year well deserved. He's a great guy, a uh, great YouTube channel. If you haven't seen any of his fly tying videos, you need to check them out. Incredible videography work, just incredible on that. But he also wrote a couple good books. This is one that he's wrote here. Uh, the Featherbenders Fly Tying Techniques must get for your fly tying library. I do suggest it. I took it, had it autographed. So uh, I got an autographed copy of it, which I just very cool one of the prized possessions in my library but uh today since i got my aut book autographed i thought i'd tie a pattern from his book one of them that i really like and i uh, thought you might like to see too it's a guild mayfly nymph and it's in essence a pheasant tail with a twist and it's really cool and i'm gonna tie it for you but one thing i'm gonna go over real quick before i get into tying uh, i use peacock curl if you can get a hold of a whole peacock string, you know, if you, if you have a farm nearby that has this peacocks or whatever, you know, and you can get one whole feather off of it. If you can get the whole feather and not the strung stuff, this is a lot stronger than the strung stuff. This is chemically treated, dyed a lot of times, they weaken. If you can get a hold of a real, a real whole feather, you're going to have a lot of more success with it. But I'm also going to tie two in here and cut one off just in case one breaks. I've been practicing tying this fly here now for a while and uh, I've had the hurl break a lot on me especially using the strung stuff. So if you use the strung hurl definitely use two like I'm going to show you here. So let's get into tying it. I know you're going to love this vid this pattern and uh, here you're going to see it in the vise and then the material list to tie it. Alright guys, here we see the Guild Mayfly in the vise. Let's get into tying it. Um, cool looking pattern. And not that hard to tie. It's in essence just a pheasant tail. So, for a hook, I'm going to use a fire hole 633 in the size 12. Tie it smaller if you want to. Tie it bigger if you want to. Make a stonefly imitation out of it if you want. Um, for thread, 140 denier. This is brown that I'm using. And for the tail, I'm just going to use some pheasant tail fibers. About eight, six or eight here. And we're going to tie it on at the back. Now, I want this tail to be oh, less than half the length of the shank here. Well, about half the length of the shank, I should say. I don't want a real long tail. I'm going to wrap it back here to the bend, and a lot of times I like to go one wrap underneath it. Oops. Yeah, go one wrap underneath it, not trapping any of the fibers, and pulling up. It just kind of holds it straight off the hook there. So then I'm going to wrap this forward and just pull off those pheasant tail fibers. So I've got my tail on there now. I'm going to bring my thread back, and uh, in the intro to the video, I said about tying on two of those peacock curls strands. I'm going to tie one on each side. Now I'm only going to use one of these. So one of these is going to be on here as the backup. So I'm just going to tie one on each side. I tie it in by the tip. And this is just in case one breaks whenever I'm winding it up. Next thing I'm going to put on is a piece of medium sized clear vinyl rib 
And I'm going to start that right where I want, oh, about a third of the way back. This is where I want the uh, abdomen to end. So I'm just going to wrap this all down, wrap it right back there to that tail, and wrap it forward. Okay, we're going to take that vinyl rib then and just wrap it around my hook shank. Oops. If you let go of it, it unwinds. So keep a tight hold on it and wrap it forward. So one way you can keep it from unwinding to switch hands is just place your finger on top of it and lock it in place there with your finger. And then once I get up there to where I started tying that down, I'm just going to tie it off on the underside. And then we're going to trim this off. Okay, now we're going to come in with our peacock curl. And I'm going to not pull too hard or you will break this. And I'm just going to rib this in between. Right in between the grooves that I created by that vinyl rib. I'm going to wrap it right up there to the head and tie it off. Now, I left that other one on there. Whoops. I put two on there to begin with in case I broke this one. I didn't break it yet. So what I'm going to do before I go cutting this off, I'm going to trim the back on this. Now in Barry's book, he takes a lighter and uh, takes a lighter and trims it with a lighter, singes the hairs on the back off. I prefer to cut them off. It's a little bit, um, with a lighter you can actually hit it a little too hot and uh, cut your hair. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of UV glue down over the back and that's going to secure all them hair in place. Should they, uh, you know, should you just break one of the hurl on a fish tooth or something, it's not going to unwind on you. So you're going to get at least more than one fish out of it, hopefully. And I like to put two coats just to build a nice smooth back on there. That's sole res bone dry. Now that I got that done, then I'm going to come in here, cut this other hurl off, and save it for my next one. Now, the next thing we're going to put on is the legs on this nymph. And for the legs, I'm going to come in with another piece of pheasant tail. And I'm going to match all them tips up. And I'm going to stick it out over the eye. And I want it to be, oh, about half the length, probably. I would say would be a good judge, half the length of the hook shank. And we're going to wrap it down and wrap it back towards the back. Now I'm going to do that for one side. That's about six or seven uh, strands of pheasant tail fiber. And I'm going to do that again on the other side and make these equal length here. Six or seven strands on the other side. Wrap them up there to the eye and then back there to our abdomen. Last thing we're going to add is three strands of the peacock hurl here. You can use the strung hurl. That's fine. We're just going to tie that back there to the bend, or sorry, not to the bend, back to our pheasant tails there. And then I'm going to wrap my thread forward and we're going to cover this up with her. I'll make this thorax a nice even green her. So if you want, you can go over it once or twice. And then I'm going to tie it off right there behind those legs. Make about two or three nice wraps there. And then pop them off. Now keep that tight so you don't lose your hurl. You can if you want. Throw a quick half hitch in there. That'll keep that from unwinding on you. Now here we're going to take and we're going to split these legs in half. Just going to even on each side. Split them in half and pull them back with my fingers. And then we're going to come back over with our wing case. I've got a couple up on top here, so I'm just going to split them apart. Put my wing case down over the top. And tie that off there. Like one or two wraps underneath it. And then we're going to trim off the end of our wing case here. Oops, sorry for getting in front of you. 
And then I'm just going to whip finish my head. And that is all that's to this fly. It's a very cool looking little alternative to a pheasant tail. And uh, has a great look to it. So give it a try if you're looking for something different in the line of a pheasant tail. Okay guys, I hope you liked that video. Like I said, check out Barry Ward Clark. Check out his YouTube channel, channel and definitely order his book. It's a great book. Lots of great patterns in there. And um, there's ones that are... Yes, he's from Norway or Sweden. Yeah, Norway, I believe. And uh, that was one of the cool reasons why it's such an, you know, such a sentimental thing to me having a book signed from him because the chance of getting to see him again, you know, how many times he's going to make it back here, we don't know. So it was really cool to get an autographed copy of my book. But anyway, guys, check him out. Great YouTube channel. Like I said, the video and his photography in his book is just incredible. Um, I'm very jealous of his photography skills. But anyways, guys, any of the material, like always, head on over to our shop. We have all the materials in stock to tie this fly. And uh, anything else you may need, we can always special order it for you. So don't be afraid to ask. If there's something you're looking for and you can't find anywhere else, we'll hunt it, up, hunt it down for you and find it. Thanks for watching, like always, guys. And until next week when I bring you another fly time video, I'm Sean Holsinger.